Here's the question I get a lot. Is cloud really cheaper than on-premise? Well, the answer, it varies. And that's because different environments, well, they're different, right? Because the cloud provides us some great features that we might not have on-premise. So we kind of have apples and oranges at that point. But even if we did have apples to apples comparison, what is it worth to your organization to be in the cloud? Is there a true cost benefit? Well, that's a great question. And that's what we're going to talk about right now with cost benefit analysis. So the first question we have, is cost a factor? Come on, folks. We know that the answer is an astounding heck yeah, it is. Cost is always a factor in our decisions. Now, if it wasn't, it would be great. We could do whatever is best for the organization, whatever features are best for us, but we do have limitations, and those limitations are generally financial limitations. So cost is almost always a key data point in deciding whether or not to go to the cloud. With that being said, let's talk about some points to consider. Now, some of those points are... When we are in the cloud, we do get to take advantage of resource pooling, which means there's a ton of resources out there and we can access it whenever we want to. We don't have to go and buy additional CPUs, buy more memory, buy more storage, and go and configure it and wait for it to be delivered. No, that stuff is all at our fingertips. And a great benefit to the cloud service providers is when they purchase these large amounts of resources and pool them, then they can offer us more attractive pricing compared to as if we were to do it ourselves. So oftentimes there is some money to be saved there. Another point is factors in efficiencies. Cloud is simply easier to manage than on-premise infrastructure because the CSP is taking care of a lot of that work, like they manage the underlying hypervisors. They manage the physical servers and the physical networks infrastructure, uh, not to mention all that storage infrastructure as well. They manage all of that for us. We just carve a little piece out and use it. We just have to worry about the management of our services, not the underlying hardware and physical infrastructure. So, of course, this includes a serious reduction in our maintenance requirements as far as labor. And this allows for a shift in focus so that we can take all that focus we had on managing our underlying physical infrastructure and we can focus that on new activities that are going to benefit the organization. All right, let's talk about a couple more points to consider. We're continuing with our points that we need to consider when we're performing a cost-benefit analysis in the cloud. Well, one of them is a shift from CapEx to OpEx. And remember, we talked about these earlier where CapEx is where we had a large upfront financial investment in creating our infrastructure. We had to go out and buy all of our infrastructure and spend all that money up front. Whereas OpEx is a month-to-month -month financial investment that we're making, and we can work that into our expenses. And we can easily forecast what our needs are and what our expenses are going to be. And that's a key point here. With this shift to the cloud, it allows us to do some great uh, financial forecasting as to what our needs are going to be and what our financial expenses are going to be in the cloud. Next up, depreciation. Now, when we use CapEx and we go out and buy all of that hardware on our own and we've got it sitting on premise, well, yeah, what we're going to be able to do is use depreciation to our benefit. Depreciation is going to go to our books on an annual schedule so that we're writing off our depreciation as an expense. Now, when we shift to an OPEX, well, we don't have depreciation to use. So that's something to keep in mind. Another point, utility costs. So here we're talking about if we have servers and infrastructure on premise, well, we have to power all of that and then we have to cool all of that as well because as we use that power to make sure our infrastructure is running it's going to create a bunch of heat and we have to cool all that heat We've got to get rid of it so along with this well that is our utility cost so that's a cost that will greatly diminish if you go to the cloud because you don't have that infrastructure on premise that you're powering and keeping cool 
All right, a couple more points to consider. Uh, number one, reduce software licensing cost. Because if we have a physical infrastructure on site, we purchase servers, then we're going to have to, of course, purchase licenses for those servers and most likely pay an annual licensing fee to go along with it. Whereas if we're in the cloud, the CSPs are able to purchase such large volumes of licenses that they can in turn save us quite a bit of money on our software licensing. And then lastly, in the cloud, we are in a metered cost infrastructure, which of course means we only pay for what we use. Whereas if we purchase a server infrastructure and we put on site, we've got all these servers that we purchased for on premise. And if we're only using 40% of their capabilities or their resources, we're still paying for 100% of it. Whereas in the cloud, we only pay for what we use. So it is very cost effective. And those are some really great points to consider when you're talking about cost-benefit analysis and you're comparing your on-prem to a cloud solution and you're trying to calculate and come up with what is the true cost here. And that leads us to considering some data points for TCO or total cost of ownership. The first point I'm going to talk about is legal costs. Because when you move to the cloud and start using cloud services, you're going to want someone from legal or legal representative to review those contracts and make sure that they are in your organization's best interest. Now, if you're not using cloud services, you probably don't have this expense. So this is something that actually is less on premise. And that carries over into contract negotiation because you're going to be performing negotiations with your cloud service provider, and that's going to take up time from most likely your C-suite. And at that point, well, that's additional time they have to put into that, plus legal is going to be reviewing those additional contracts. And what about training needs? If you're not using cloud services, then your on-prem IT support team, well, they probably don't know how to support a cloud environment. So, well, we're going to have to either hire some folks who do or train our internal folks if they're willing. And either way, it's going to cost us some money. And next up is reporting capabilities. And this usually comes down to logging abilities. And if we have some complicated reporting capabilities that we need, well, can the CSP meet those needs? That's the question here. And most often times they can. However, it does come at an additional expense. They offer additional logging and analysis services. But again, you're paying for those. Those aren't part of the base package. And then lastly, I'm going to put that right down here underneath because it's very related, audit capabilities. And again, logging comes into this because we're going to be auditing the data in those logs. Is there an easy way to do that with this cloud provider? Do they offer some type of auditing system for your logs? And oftentimes they do. However, again, you're paying extra for that. So those are some things we need to consider when we're talking about total cost of ownership and cost benefit analysis in the clouds. So we're comparing our on-prem to a cloud solution. Which one will win out in the end? Well, I don't know. It's up to the results from our cost-benefit analysis and TCO analysis. I hope this has been informative for you. I'd like to thank you for viewing.